Joining us via phone now is legal practitioner Raymond Nkanebe. Good morning, Mr. Raymond. Yeah, good morning, Felicity. Okay, it's Amaka. Anyways, what's your assessment of INEC's new policy framework for conducting elections in the context of COVID-19 pandemic? Okay, thank you very much. Um, my preliminary reaction is that um, it's commendable to the extent that um, it gives the impression that the Independent National Electoral Com Commission is alive to its responsibility and how that might have been impacted by the realities of the moment. And so that uh, this effort suggests that it is um, devising new ways of um, meeting its statutory obligations to Nigeria. So to that extent, it's commendable. Now, Raymond, the question again is, should this election be held during this pandemic, really? Uh, there is no immediate way to answer that question. Um, I think it is a commission based on um, its processes and the information available to it and understanding of the, uh, of the states where these elections are due to be held. I'm sure uh, it is uh, on a proper evaluation and assessment of the realities in these places. Uh, the info and information which I believe uh, they, have the, they have the best means of assessment. So if they decide that they can go ahead, so why can't we give them the support? Well, you, you, you would agree that these are novel times we live in, and Nigerians are still adjusting with some difficulty to the new changes. And there is likely to be an increased level of voter apathy. How can INEC address this? Yes, I agree with you that there, are, there, are, there might be fears of voter apathy. But you see, it's not enough reason for us to put ourselves in a bigger constitutional logjam. You understand? Um, in spite of the pandemic, we've seen elections held in other climes. And I think it's all about um, finding a way to balance uh, both ends, mm -hmm. getting, putting in place uh, the safety standards advised by the NCDC and, and find a way to midwife the process in a way that would not uh, hamper voters and also electoral Officer, uh, officer. Now, wh while we are preparing for elections, some global leaders, including former president of Nigeria, good luck, Jonathan, have alerted the world that democracy is at risk globally because of the novel coronavirus. What's your take on this? I agree that democracy uh, is, is at risk. And you, a clear case of that is what is currently happening in Ethiopia. All right, Lee, they were, they were, they were supposed to have an election, parliamentary election by August, uh, but the incumbent leader there has relied on this pandemic and his slim chances, if they should go to ballot in August, to postpone the elections open-endedly by saying on the time when we can contain the pandemic. Now, who knows when we, some people are saying that this might continue to 2022. So does it mean that we are going to they, we are going to wait until then before the the country can hold elections? So to that extent, there are clear evidence of democracy being under threat, and which might also snowball into serious political crisis, particularly in this part of the world where people are so attached with issues around election and all of that. So there is a clear case of threats to our constitutionalism and across. Africa and most other nations preparing for elections. And that's why the electoral commissions in those places must try as much as possible to find a way to um, carry out these elections in such a way that will minimize to the barest minimum the risk factors associated with COVID-19. All right, thank pandemic. you so very much, Raymond, for your time. Keep safe out there. You're welcome.